I just need to start by introducing you to um, really a, a master craftsman of the like uh, the world has never seen. And we are very privileged to have here the one and only Herman Bloomer. Herman, would you like to join me on stage? Give him a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Herman, come, come. I just want to ask Herman a few, uh, a few questions. This is Lauren Brasser, <laughs> who's uh, also a master craftsman. And um, so we're the Timber Gang here. When I, when I was a student, Hermann, um, one of my uh, absolute favorite designers was the brothers Grubermann, which uh, in the UK nobody had ever heard about. But I knew because uh, the architect John Sohn who is a classical architect, had done a tour of Switzerland. So he, he had made little models of the uh, Grubenman Brothers Bridge at Schaffhausen. And uh, that turned me on to uh, the idea of building in timber and building ambitious structures in timber. So to tell me, how did you get into it? Was it in the family already? Are you a descendant? No, <laughs> no Grubenman was in uh, the village, uh, two village, between our village in Teufen. And is, uh, I was born in Waldstadt, 15 kilometer airline. Yeah. Airline, yes. Yeah. And uh, in our country, up until uh, he's a very, very famous person because uh, we are proud. He built his bridges, uh, one bridge in Schaffhausen, I tell it this evening, uh, with 120 meter span, free span. But he couldn't build it like that because the uh, client would that has a pylon in the middle. Mm. They couldn't believe that it's possible to build a bridge with 120 meters in 780, something like that. And uh, so he built models and he sit on the models to mm. show to it's them. working. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And what was your route into engineered timber? What was your personal journey into this world? Uh, my personal, uh, I was born in the company of my grandfather, father, oh. a sawmill, a carpentry. Yeah. And uh, then, yes, I was every time looking how carpenters are working. And then I learned uh, carpenter in French speaking Switzerland. So I could learn French, but not English. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> and uh, then uh, I thought that, that is not good for the moment with the timber, with the wood. I go to the high school and learn engineers. And that was the start. Mm. But I was, there were 220 in, uh, students, and I was only one to do I work with timber, yeah. only one Wow! at this time. Amazing. But y I think it's also fair to say there is an unbroken tradition of uh, joinery skill in Switzerland and working with wood that remains. Uh, whereas in other countries like Netherlands or the UK, uh, the Industrial Revolution stopped the relationship with wood the status of wood changed. Yes. You know, it was the best material to work with. Then it became fuel to make steel. But in yes. Switzerland and Germany, this tradition of working with wood remains, right? And you were born into that. Yes. Absolutely right, yeah. yes. That, uh, we had a, a broke between. Yeah. And uh, we had a good education yeah. situation in Switzerland. And that helped us now to do things like that I show, mm. will show. Great. And you, as a student, did you start working with computers or was that uh, before they were really able to be scripted? I'm sure I'm getting the dates wrong. You look younger than you are. <laughs> but, you know, um, presumably you learnt the craft of working with hand tools and then at some point you switched to also using uh, computers and scripting. Yeah. So... Um, that was the moment when you started working on bigger projects, 
like with say Shigeru Ban? Uh, no, before, uh, because uh, uh, it invented uh, BSB, Lignatur, and all these things like, and uh, uh, robotic machines, 1990. Uh -huh. uh, at this time, I was programming uh, 1970, start with programming uh -huh. with the computer, and people thought uh, he is a little bit crazy at this time, but uh, perhaps it was not so bad because I learned to do yeah things like that, and they helped me, and uh, the education or the, the formation of Carpenter was very, very important, to have feelings through the timber. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I think that's an important point, because you, you uh, bridge those traditions of um, working by hand and working on computers. So, without further ado, I would like to invite Herman to present his work to us. Thank you so much, Herman. I must have the presentation. Now, yes. Thank you for the invitation. I need a help from Lorin Brussel because uh, sometimes I don't know the English word and nevertheless the uh, Dutch word. <laughs> but uh, I could do it in Switzerland <laughs> dialect, then you could understand nothing. Uh, th uh, thank you, Hans. I think you get a ri big risk to invite me because I don't know if client, uh, the audience will be satisfied after my speech. This picture uh, was a competition which is uh, headquarters Stora Enzo, and now I let translate uh, Lorin. Uh, um, so uh, he, he's uh, explaining about this project in which uh, they, they were the, the preferred, uh, um, sorry, they, they were by far the preferred uh, um, designer. There, there was a, a public, uh, um, there was a pub public, um, um, it is on, okay. Um, there, Maybe you got to press something, yes. Um, so there was a um, public jury. jury. Yeah, a public jury uh, that, that picked them, and uh, the, the co-op the co between Shigeru Bon and, uh, and Herman Bloomer. And um, even though they, um, they, they, they had the, the, the most inspiring uh, design, it, uh, it was uh, Stora Enzo that actually uh, mistrusted uh, the final execution of, uh, of the project and they did not believe it could be executed. So they, were, they, they finally picked the, the, the second design and not their design. That's the problem I have with Chigaruba. <laughs> but I think, uh, I'm sure, water and wood will be in the gene of Dutch peoples, because they build old chips, old timber chips, wood chips, and wood mill, windmill, and windmill. And also the ceilings in Amsterdam, I think they are in wooden beams. Uh, uh, I also have two projects with timber and water together. I start with one of these projects. We did it in Korea, in South Korea. Uh, and it's a special project with Shigeru Ban. It's a project after one project we had in uh, uh, 2012, and this was 2018. Uh, connection uh, between the hotel and the golf clubhouse. And here the peak hall is very special because on the top, there are really uh, be, uh, uh, 
David uh, Dries and uh, Walter, and below are trees made in carpentry. Uh, I'm passioning with uh, Rhino designing because then I had to do the center, center of Pompidou in Metz. I couldn't uh, design the geometry of this uh, construction of this uh, roof. So I learned uh, Rhino and uh, also Airstab, uh, that is a static program. And with these uh, tools, I can really do things like that. I the best is when you learn tools, when you have something you can't do without your knowledge, then you should choose good tools. Another project in Japan that is a visiting center of uh, uh, Fuji. The Fuji put on the head and uh, uh, in the water you have the Spiegelung. Uh, Spiegelung. Uh, mirroring. mirroring. And uh, Chikaru Ban met me in Switzerland and he showed me a mock-up that was built in Japanese and he was absolutely not satisfied with his mock-up and so I said to him I will traveling uh, very very fast to Japan for one day and <laughs> the mock-up was like that it was not uh, precise and there are gaps and uh, you see the people <laughs> never <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I was alone. 15 people around me, uh, Japanese people, so 12, about 12. And so I explained how we can do it. We uh, d deliver it, uh, supplied um, CNC machines, and the result was fantastic. That would say you can do things with people when they are motivated very, very foolish. You can do that when you ha ha have the good towel. Now I try to... <laughs> Our genes. <laughs> uh, my grand Child once said to my wife, I have so many ideas, I don't know which one to start with. I said, you must have an idea, and the idea can come from architects and... So, so the, uh, the lesser, the yeah, first no, style. Yeah, yeah it's so good. Okay. Uh, back means the filler is one. Uh, who made uh, construction with uh, minimal uh, material. And so you have also uh, construction with uh, wood and water together. Okay. Um, near Vancouver, there's these, uh, these trees, um, the sequoias. I'm not sure exactly what... Uh, uh, what my goal is here, but I, I think it has uh, mostly to do that um, um, we, we, we have to reconnect with, uh, with the materials and uh, the, the fact that uh, we, we, uh, there, there's very large living examples of, uh, of the background we have and uh, we, we as a uh, um, as, as the Dutch in a country that has uh, really thrived on, on wood, uh, have really strayed from it, uh, even though it has built up our, uh, our in, entire industrial revolution. Uh, so we can start with beams, with trees. Uh, in Norway, you have traditional boat building also, and Holland, I think, and also, uh, Wooden constructions, wooden constructions in the houses. <coughs> uh, the, transform Don't go ahead. Go ahead. the transformation from these beams 
could be done by uh, robotic system. You can scanning the trees, took it in the computer and build up. And here it was a very interesting story. I met the architects in uh, Innsbruck and he said the engineers would have here at the A lot of uh, metal. And I went to Stavanger and said, you has just to bound, uh, uh, bound open machen. Und dann braucht es unten nichts. Uh, there, there, there's a strapping connection at the top to, uh, to bind it together. And then you don't need steel. <coughs> and this is another project where they uh, put uh, soil and concrete, and then they, and the, and they, 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 they are the terrain back as a, yeah. as the, the soil as, as, as yes, as their counterform. Shigeru One creates new idea idea for each project catches in his. Uh, <laughs> Ah, ja. Ja. ah, ja, das ist besser. <laughs> and this is a cable station for the Prince of Reina of Monaco. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, the, you see the street, there is a race of the uh, Formula One. And, uh, but it's not built, but my work is to transform that, his ideas in a timber uh, construction who is makeable. Uh, here a uh, dome from Shigeru Ban for, for Google and uh, construction's way is a little bit special with this v rendel system, very simple, only wood towels and uh, shear connectors and you can form these beams without any machining. But, and in uh, Aspen in the United States, we built this museum in Colorado. Uh, here the diagonals are rounded where they come together with the charts. And that is from the view of the engineers, very uh, bad, not good. So uh, we had to find uh, solution to do that. Uh, a station in Japanese with a web structure, also uh, a little bit complicated to solute, to find the solution. And uh, yes, <laughs> for me sometimes it's yeah some weeks until I find. Uh, uh, possibility to do that. And Shigeru Ban uh, makes all times also models. And here is now a film uh, when you could start it. Uh, I was in, uh, in Africa and I organized this model at home. <laughs> it is a competition for Novartis. Uh, building with uh, mod module, also molecules and connections. And the presentation was 2018 in Basel. Uh, Banz, uh has gets his idea also with observations. This is the flight over New Zealand uh, with threes and meander. And uh, here, uh, I propose to have a special connection with the uh, timber screw and uh, perhaps you ask you how you can drill in this screw. It's an easy idea, you must make it conic, but you can do that with the machines and when you, it's very, very hard or steif or fest, good Verbindung. It's a very stiff and rigid uh, connection. 
and uh, we hope now for the realization. But uh, we can use this uh, uh, system of connections for block houses, block houses. Uh, for uh, lock, lock Staffelbau, for, for log homes. Log house, yeah. Uh -huh. Many projects together with Shigeru Ban were for the cat. Not yet built. Second place. No reaction. Second place. Without any chance. <laughs> Not built. Second place. Here we won. <laughs> what can wood? Wood is a unsurpassable as a multifunctional building material. Yeah. Huh? Perhaps you can. Okay. Um, the comparison to a decathlete, uh, build, build, it is a building material, it is a thermal insulator, a sound insulator, sound absorber, energy storage, humidity regulator, interior design, exterior design, fire protection, fuel, so uh, it uh, accumulates all these uh, all, all these uh, characteristics which uh, uh, the Bloorma company has uh, integrated into a very wide uh, uh, array of uh, Lignatur uh, elements that uh, offer, offer these specs and uh, is a very fast and uh, effective uh, way to, uh, to, to solve uh, building problems. Uh, when we think at wood, it's like a, a rod. Uh, it's a longitudinal direction, very good, but not very weak in the transversal direction. The advantage is that we can have bending in the wood and also stiffness. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Would you uh, say something? No? I, I think, uh, yeah, it's exactly. clear. Yeah, it's very clear. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> because we, uh, you must understand that the wood. <laughs> and so you can uh, wood ha ha also in the from the nature, uh, but also in the art. James Terrell was uh, is the same age as me, 81, but he started as psychology, 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 psychology yes, yeah. psychology, and then he built uh, so uh, light. Uh, buildings connected with light. He was also pilot, pilot, pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one project was a ferry island in Maldives. And uh, the problem here was a little bit special. No racing, no di diagonals, a uh, big hole in the middle of the roof. and. Th Five millimeters of edge roof. Yeah, yeah. Edge. A super, super <laughs> slim edge that had to be perfectly straight. And all connections had to be done stiff. Yeah. And with people's fair. Ah, with the with the local production, so um, uh, local Afri crews, African local people. assembly. Yeah, yeah and like African peoples. But it was very. It's now very nice. <clears throat> uh, 2013, I had a question from Shigeru Ban. He comes into Switzerland uh, to Kloten for two hours and he asked me what can wood better than steel and concrete in a seven story office building. And my answer was silence, silence, silence. I didn't have an idea how I could answer. After that, I uh, designed a sketch, a bionic figure, bionic figure, yeah. bionic figure, and this figure was completed from Shigeru Ban. After uh, two, two weeks, he sent me this uh, sketch at the left, and uh, after this build picture, we had nobody would. Uh, Think to the uh, trans, uh, wieder übergehen zu Hochbetten und Holz. Uh, 
No, nobody uh, wanted to go back to steel or concrete anymore. They were completely convinced. Uh, that's very simple. You have the good sketch, and then you can build with timber. So uh, simple is building with timber. <laughs> According to Shigeruban, we couldn't use a steel connection. And uh, here, okay. the seven mile. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so he wanted to execute all the wood joints or all the all the joints in wood, um, and this this was the main goal, and uh, this was executed uh, until the very foundation. So every load bearing and bracing uh, joint is uh, completely out of timber. Uh, and I had to invent a new connection system with uh, hardwood with. Uh, Reinforcing holes and dowels also. In, in beech wood? In beech, yes. Beech, plywood. And after that, uh, engineers uh, go on, went on with uh, this different uh, possibility to build uh, connections in timber. That was uh, also the test where necessary, but uh, that was uh, so impressioning that people now would build like that. And here the carpenters are sitting on one of the, these beams and below in Zurich there are young girls and cook high. And uh, <laughs> so, so everybody will <laughs> want to be here in Zurich to do the assembly. <laughs> After 11 years, uh, this building is always uh, very, uh, yeah, famous, and uh, Pritzker Prize winner Shigeru Ban revealed uh, after that he get the uh, uh, the uh, Pritzker Prize here in Amsterdam, and I was present. And that evening he said to me that I, without me he couldn't win this prize. <laughs> uh, New uh, ideas are very, very streng, strong. When I started with him 2005, I have these pictures and we couldn't believe that is uh, makeable. And the connection system was uh, proposed from Arup, the big engineering office, but uh, not realizable. And so I had to find something else. Uh, I propose. Uh, I versprochen. I have been versprochen that I will do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> but then I, <laughs> I didn't know how. That was my big problem. <laughs> he had made the promise. It was going to be uh, executed in wood. I had seven months to find the solution. I have ants in my head. That was <laughs> really crazy. <laughs> and, uh, but once in the morning, I saw this construction, a virendal construction, and then all was clear. From this connection to the other connections, uh, the changing helped us to understand how we can realize it. And we built a big uh, mock-up without any a fee from firma Amman, and uh, I had the help of the geometric from design to production in Zurich, and also the, this, uh, the machinery dates to transform. Uh, they helped me, and that, that this time was really uh, the first thing we built with these double curved beams and twisted beams but uh, it helps a lot to go on with wood constructions and now it's no, uh, normal with you can build without any, <laughs> any help. <coughs> Opening 2010. Another building uh, in Korea uh, at this time, I was uh, in Korea and <laughs> that was my problem. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know how to do it, and... And the deformations were about four times too high. Um, what, 
uh, eventually his his solution was to um, um, to to have the the two stack. Um, so it's it's uh, two times two layers, and the half notching of these uh, of these notches were either on the inner two cores or the outer two layers, and that meant that um, he he could um, he, he could. Uh, have con continuous strings and have um, them only weak in compression points or in stretching points and that's how he shifted from the outside layers to the inside layers and that's how he solved the... Uh yeah. And so simply was the solution. <laughs> but uh, I had this uh, design uh, to present that uh, company and everybody around this table said that it's not possible in seven months to build things like that in Korea because you are six weeks on sea and uh, I had to invent a new method uh, when everybody said that is not possible what you do you I ask everybody if you do only if you must do only that what you can, then you do it. Then everybody said yes, and I had only to coordinate. Yeah, so he took the lead, and um, and in, instead of having a regular uh, regular building formatation, he, he took the lead in uh, in the engineering and in uh, the 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 wrap up of uh, the mm -hmm. construction. We couldn't assemble it in Switzerland, a test, we couldn't do, the time was too short, so we sent it to Korea and had the hope that it's fitting. And wow, it was fitting. <laughs> and uh, at the ceremony, Shigeru Ban was very happy and nobody could understand how it was possible to do things like that. For everybody, it was a little bit uh, geheimnisvoll. Sick. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, the project uh, in Zurich, uh, in Biel, uh, from Swatch, we were there, uh, eight, four architects were, had a competition, but we uh, had a pre-presentation, and after one week, uh, we, was, we were choose to do that. And you see that this uh, from the complication, this uh, view enormous, uh, I think uh, that goes in a direction who would can be absolute the champion in the future. Yeah. But because in steel or in concrete you can do th things like that, that's that not imaginable. And uh, also this musical in uh, Paris. I come to the end. My genes, genus are risk, risk, risk. And uh, I had sometimes a, a, a counselor, counselor uh, of uh, town, Tony Steiner, and he sent me to build a bridge to planning a bridge uh, never see and my designs were very simple very traditional he was absolutely not satisfied and then uh, is a good mean that you think nine that is in german nine no, nie, mm -hmm. in norway no. No. Uh, noch ein input nötig nine is uh, another <laughs> input necessary and that helps, then you go on, and now it should uh, uh, put on the film. <clears throat> because that is now... Stop it. That's at the last slide.
exchange ideas and swarm intelligence make Holland the prime timber country. Thank you. Fantastic, Herman. That was, I'm sure, a very small selection of hundreds of projects. And um, it was obviously fantastic to see. So thank you. Um, I think we need to um, take a few minutes to perhaps answer some questions from the audience, if they have any for you. I mean, I, I could perhaps start by asking... Um, about the relation between designing and making and whether you have uh, many carpenters in your company who um, understand how you think and who make it immediately and better than perhaps if you gave it to someone else. Is that true? Do you need the same team? Yes, I need a lot of uh, helpers yeah. to do things like that because uh, <laughs> my... <laughs> Uh, my mind is <laughs> not so big, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> no, uh, um, you need helpers, and that must you must bow up with uh, people's young peoples. And uh, when I have constructions like that, and I, uh, it comes the next one in the same way, they didn't ask me. Mm. I'm too old for that, or I have to invent new things. But, but I think when you work closely with the same people the trust is developed and the knowledge is developed and also then you can really take risks. And so all the best engineers and architects in history, I think, have had this close relationship with the people that make the buildings. So, I don't know, say, uh, you could say Eliado Dieste, who does impossible structures in brick, he had his own family company, you know, they built it, they understood. They knew the details and they understood the risks that were being taken. So I, I see that too in your work. Very interesting. Anyway, any any more questions or comments from the room? Okay. So we're going to do the questions afterwards, if that's okay. So we'll. Big grand for applause for Herman Zuma. Thank you. And now I need to introduce um, Lida Vey Lenders here and her column, uh, colleague uh, Dennis Hauer, who um, have been busy compiling uh, a survey of 15 Dutch timber buildings and making an analysis of those construction techniques in order to document that and uh, create a book of uh, not necessarily standard details but recommended details that the industry can follow. And I think this is a really important document because it will of course open doors for many people who want to build in timber. So thank you. Hello everyone. Very privileged to be uh, to be here, especially especially after uh, this lecture we had from Herman Bloomer, the master in timber building. Feeling a little bit humble standing here, but I hope this um, this lecture can bring us back to the ground, to the Dutch reality where we're in right now. <laughs> Um, Dennis and I are working on a research and on a book uh, about the detailing of. Um, timber housing in the Netherlands. So, um, I'm Liedewey, uh, I'm an architect, and I think I built my first house in 2006 in timber. Since then I've been working a lot with bio-based material. Next to that I'm a lecturer at the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam. Um, and since I'm doing this uh, research, I'm a front runner at the Build by Nature uh, organization. Yes, and my name is uh, Dennis Hauer. Um, 
it uh, was quite a rush to get here on time this morning. I had uh, typical uh, problems with the uh, Dutch trains, uh, uh, which most are familiar. But this one I hadn't experienced yet. We actually got hit by a goose. So, and the goose destroyed the train. So, <laughs> but I made it in time, so I'm here. Um, I'm architect director of uh, Urban Climate Architects, uh, uh, an uh, architecture firm in Delft. And uh, well, we specialize ourselves in wood building. So basically we only, all new build projects, we only design them in wood. And besides that, we also work a lot with Dutch Green Building Council uh, on uh, Bream. Uh, and for that, I'm also a Bream expert. Of course, also one of the Build by Nature front runners, and I'm also a member of the advisory board of uh, Build by Nature. Yeah, I first want to explain you, I think it was in 2016 or something, I was working on my first uh, stacked uh, housing uh, apartment building, and I found out that I, I, did, I first did this simple housing, uh, row housing, that's quite simple compared to the stacked uh, detailing. And I found out it was, yeah, you need a lot of advisors to find the right details. You don't have any standards to fall back on. Um, after that, uh, when you have to get the permit, you, you find out that these uh, people have to, to look at your work. They don't know about it. There's, there are no reference details. So there can be more complications. In the execution phase, things can go wrong, and in the uh, um, last phase, when people are living in the building, uh, problems can occur, like, for example, uh, the sound or uh, sound problems. Or, um, so there are lots of things, I don't want to be negative, there are lots of challenges <laughs> we have in this uh, housing detailing uh, where we can learn a lot from. So uh, I think a lot of, projects are experienced it, also Dennis, and that's why the idea came up to start this, um, this research. Um, yeah, because we understand if you see that we both love to design in wood and we only want to design wooden buildings, but although even as it, it cost us quite some effort to get it actually done. So I can't imagine what would happen if you are an architect and want to design your first wood project and, and the whole field you have to uh, come again. So we hope with this investigation, with this research, we can provide more uh, uh, insight on that and help the market to, uh, to scale up. Uh, the next one, this one. Yeah, so we uh, made a plan for the research. At first we wanted to uh, make an inventory of the wooden timber housing blocks that are built right now or being built. Uh, do a case study of that. Uh, step three, translate them together with an expert team into uh, reference details that other projects in the future can fall back to. Translate this into a handbook and afterwards we will uh, tell the world about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, at first it is, uh, the focus is on the Netherlands because also we need it in the Dutch building regulations and the Dutch culture, but perhaps after we finish it we can look abroad and perhaps look if we can put it also into a European database, for example. So uh, we're not just yet finished, we're almost halfway uh, the research. So we're now completing the case study of the 15 uh, projects we, we um, selected. Of course, we are not doing this by the two of us alone, and we have a lot of um, parties, persons who are helping us. Here you see an overview of the people. We have a lot of co-funders like Arcade, Steno, Arup, uh, the municipality of uh, Rotterdam, Tritec. Um, Built by Nature, Nature is our main funder. We have the advisory board, also Alex uh, is in there and some other, uh, Andrew Worth Thistleton is also uh, the, the English uh, architect from the UK, the architecture office, who have lots of experience in housing, in timber, and also in uh, making books with details about it. Um, there you see in the corner the um, the projects we are um, investigating and of course there are a lot of experts involved in doing this project and we speak to them so we get their knowledge. Uh, we have collaboration with other researchers like the construction stored carbon and uh, the bio-based um, 
bio-based handbook from uh, Building Balance. Uh, and in this phase, we're now going to the next phase, making the detailing, we are uh, forming an expert team uh, with experts in the Netherlands who have lots of experience in uh, the topics like acoustics, fire safety, structural engineering, and execution. So this is the first uh, inv inv inventory of the project. And when we see the first stacked housing uh, in the Netherlands was in Almere, it was the Malmohus, it was uh, in 2009, it was really his time uh, for the other ones. And then in, only in 2016 and 2019 we see the buildings of Tom Franse, um, who next to the timber ambitions also had the white ambitions to, buy, to build with an open building structure. And um, I think some of you will remember the, um, the Tegenlicht broadcast in 2019, perhaps, where it was about timber construction. And for me, it was like a turning point in how people look at timber construction uh, it, uh, in this world where we build with these finite, finite, finite uh, resources and pollution, pollution uh, materials. We can change it building with bio-based materials and uh, add a positive, um, uh, to have a positive impact on the climate. And we see here in this uh, overview that in 2021, the first, or the, there are more buildings appearing. So I think it also marks the turning point that the broadcast post, has post tegenlicht yeah. documentary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what it can do. So. Um, now, we're, uh, yeah, we're now halfway 24, of course. Uh, so this is, uh, you see the buildings are already completed and where are, that's already where is still worked on, it's on the drawing table. Um, we, uh, we selected these projects um, to research to do for the case study. And we did it on the criteria that we could get the data of the architects and the builders. And also because we wanted to have a like kind of diversi diversity in the typologies uh, of the building, because we see every building uh, is built differently. So we uh, distinguish uh, five typologies. Um, we have the hybrid uh, constructions, uh, like like the top up where concrete, for example, concrete floors are combined with, uh, with uh, timber columns. We have uh, the hybrid constructions with the concrete core where the, where the, the stability is formed by, by concrete and but you have uh, the, the timber floors and walls, for example. Uh, we have the more pure uh, uh, 2D slabs out of CLT typology. We have the typology with the uh, column beams structure and you have the typology of the 3D modular where the, the units are built in, in the factory. And when we look at the range of projects we see that we have in the first typology the like patch 22 top up. In the second one Hout, Mooiburg, Casa Vita, Falkenstein and Stories. In the Third one with the 3D slabs, it's the Moslan Knoest from Urban Climate Architects, the Monika Hof in Utrecht. Hof van Duurzaamheid. Monika Hof is built not with CLT, but it's with uh, wooden frame structure and uh, LVL um, floors. Hof van Duurzaamheid, uh, the Woon Corporatie. Okay, I have to continue <laughs> so you can see we have a lot of projects. <laughs> this is the study where we're almost finishing now, and now I pass it on to Dennis, who will tell you about our first uh, findings in the research. Yeah, so obviously no details yet, but what we did is we had some first um, uh, things we saw, and basically what we did is we uh, focused on this part of the building. So basically what you see, you have four apartments buildings, we call it the apartment cross, and everything mainly comes together over there. So how the structure is realized, how the acoustics is arranged, how the fire is arranged, and, and, and it tells you a lot for a first conclusion. And 
basically what we did is we uh, have the 15 projects uh, all over each other and then you immediately see what diversity on different solutions there is. So although we're talking about apartment buildings, you see a lot of different solutions which are, uh, uh, which are used to, uh, to come to this. And, and, and of course, it all has a reason, uh, and we're trying to get all those reasons out at the moment to see what we could learn from that. <coughs> so, lesson learned so far. Uh, at first, we see that most of the projects have about the same solutions. Uh, mainly about the the, uh, the flooring of the uh, of the for the acoustics that it's more of a floating system with some type of ballast or some concrete added uh, to to reduce to reduce the sound. Um, most projects also still have some some uh, some wet flooring installed, so we don't see a lot of projects which are completely dry uh, system. Mainly also because of the costs. Um, but we see some change now at the moment that also new type of flooring's are coming over there, which are uh, we think in the future will take a certain place. Uh, and all the projects uh, are disconnected by acoustic tape, also uh, as well in the joints as well as in the uh, as in the CLT elements. Another one is that. Most of all projects started with a great wood ambition, but a lot of times you see that uh, uh, it turns into a hybrid system. Uh, I think patch 22 uh, and, and top up was a good example of that. Uh, really high ambitions, the whole system was already thought out, but in the end he had to move back to concrete floors because it was simply uh, a lot cheaper um, uh, and, and easier to solve, and that's a shame. Um, another thing is that we we're in Amsterdam, we have the MRA uh, over here, of course, with the ambition of the, the wood buildings. And what we did, let's see what happens if we uh, test some of these projects to the MRA criteria. And the MRA criteria says that the building consists of at least 65 to 50% bio-based materials, uh, not including the foundation. And if you see uh, some projects over here in Amsterdam, Hout uh, and Mooiburg don't uh, because they're hybrid, don't match that. Uh, and two other projects, which we know are completely made out of wood with the, uh, uh, without uh, only the ground floors concrete, even then you see that it's difficult to get higher than 80 to 85%. So you see that the volume of concrete, which you still have to use in these projects, still defines a lot of those scores and also uh, in the MRA criteria. Another thing we see is that a lot of projects uh, have a very beautiful CLT construction, but in the end it's totally uh, packed with gypsum board. Uh, uh, of course, we have the flooring system, but also the walls, the ceilings a lot of times. And, and if you're lucky, we still see a wooden ceiling. So the question is, if you are going to design it like that and you're going to make it like this, why do you choose for a complete CLT structure? Because you still use a lot of materials. So maybe if this is your goal or you need to do this because of sound, it's better to choose for a different system. So maybe better a column beam system or something like that. Uh, but in the end also we see that in the different solutions, the, the, the mainly on acoustics uh, and fire, uh, there is a lot of discussion about what we can do inside and what not, and what is the best solution, and do we want extra uh, comfort uh, to make sure that, that it will work or not. And that's still something we are uh, puzzling out. And of course, also lessons learned during executions. Um, well, we're in the Netherlands, not the best weather, especially, uh, well, today is great, but the last nine months were horrible. And uh, if you build CLT uh, in our climate, then you really have to take care of that. So that if it doesn't, it's no problem if it becomes wet, but it mustn't stay wet. And we see quite some problems with, with, uh, with that in practice, where uh, over time, luckily not in the Netherlands, I haven't seen a project in the Netherlands yet, but there are some projects which we see in other countries which actually uh, create some problems with moisture in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the projects. Another thing is the dimensions and the tolerances. Wood is, has a zero tolerance. Uh, that's a picture I took from a project in Rotterdam, which we did. And you see that the window framing in the wall uh, actually has a tolerance of uh, not only two millimeters. So that means you can design with less tolerance, so you can design much more clean. But it also means that you have to execute it really clean, because if it doesn't fit, uh, well, if it's a bit too big, maybe you can shave it off. But if it's too small, then you have a problem again. 
And what you see is that the coordination between the execution disciplines is very crucial. I, th I think there's a lot to gain in that in the Netherlands, especially also with uh, uh, mechanical and uh, electrical engineering parties who still are not very common to work with that, but also the, the, uh, yeah, the main contractors who don't have good experience yet. You see that they're struggling a lot to, to get uh, a good result. And I think, yeah we can, with this research, we really can help them also to get that further. So in the end, um, it is a moving train, and as Lidewey said, we're halfway there, uh, but of course, uh, we love every help we can get. So uh, is there a project which you really say, ah, you totally missed that, you really should include it? Please let us know. Uh, we can also always see how we can add it. And if you want to uh, contribute as an expert or as a sponsor, uh, uh, please feel free to contact us. We're always open to suggestions. Thank you, Thank you Lidoe and Dennis, great. And we'll go straight on. Um, our next speaker and last speaker is Maxfield. Stuhlmacher and um, a German-born architect operating here and I look forward to seeing her insights into how to build in timber okay. in Northern Europe generally but specifically for us here in Holland. Okay, thank you um, very much. I have a real challenge of having far too many slides. I will race through them. Um, how we want to uh, work in timber, that we want to build in t timber, I have been sort of uh, advocating for more than 10 years, and then I was very, very fed up with that. And I got really thousands of phone calls by colleague architects wanting to, how do, do you do that? How do you do that? How do you work with CLT? So I, um, then I stopped that, and I thought we will just concentrate on how we do it, and what we as architects, as form givers at space makers can actually contribute to this discussion. Um, I um, want to talk about three little chapters. One is, um, the titles are here, um, because I cannot mention every collaborator every single time. We are, as everyone, we are not alone, never, and we cannot do anything by ourselves. We need our contractors and advises very much. Um, Sigurd Leverens, that was actually the one that brought me to timber, even though he has not built in timber at all. I was completely fascinated by this project for spatial reasons, and it was made in concrete by an architect who was um, in way in his 80s, and this is an iconic building, and we wanted to have a um, built in the Netherlands, where at the time it was SML XL um, prime time and no details and no materials. We wanted to achieve something that has the same sort of unity of material, structure and space, and that brought us to the timber. Our, so our own uh, very first building was this Paris at Las Palmas. It became quite an iconic thing, but it is, is actually an homage to Leverance. It's it's almost the same, uh, same kind of shape, and it was detailed. Uh, sustainability also was not a big issue. I had a sort of an intuitive feeling about working with nature and that that was better than concrete, full stop. But even the word sustainability was not invented, and the, uh, the word uh, of CLT even less. It was called Dickholz, and something uh, else was uh, hardly ever um, known. Um, we, uh, we built that and we learned a lot because the, the, the um, interior was probably a little bit like we expected, like, like we hoped. It was meant to be a temporary building, but we also found out that it now only starts. This is not an end. We have to learn a lot to make it really well. And um, especially in, in the interior, there's a lot to learn. The temporary uh, situation took us more than five years, and in these five years I argued a lot for the use of timber, but I think simply it was too early. There were very, very few people wanted to hear that, 
and uh, we were uh, even nominated for a Timber Innovation Award, but a concrete uh, structure um, got the prize and we got by the Houtblatt a bunch of flowers to apologize. It was um, not meant to be. But then we got, uh, by a few pioneering clients, we got the commission to build CLT houses, and we tried to improve what we were found spatially lacking in the Paris Islas Palmas. And these were rules, we in, uh, they were only from the sort of spatial, made about just only from the spatial experience. For instance, one of the big, big problems, if you want to um, work with CLT and you want to combine it with other timbers, it almost never fits. Oak and softwood just don't belong to each other, we found out. So we've, this, I show that because it is the discovery of the ash in combination with the CLT. That's the only hardwood that we find working. We, um, uh, we have uh, also learned also from the Paracyclus Palmas that there can be also too much timber. Don't use it for everything take the material out of the furniture, take the material out of um, the, um, the floors, and then you get a much better balance. Also, one of the biggest uh, experiences of the Parasite Las Palmas was the, um, the flatness of the CLT structure, and people tend to not consciously experience that if you don't put something different next to it. Then you can see here in this, uh, in this example, the veranda outside, which is a traditional structure, and the flatness in, inside, and this combination, we feel, makes the experience richer. We have then um, uh, decided that we probably want to build never without timber, but we um, concentrate on using it where we actually can have multiple reasons to to show it and to use it. We can only build in timber, we can only afford it financially, unfortunately, where um, these number of uh, reasons are um, required, acoustics and structure and insulation and acoustic uh, absorption. And all, when all this comes together and the aesthetic, then we stand a chance. Um, we have also experienced that there are many, many tastes in, in, uh, for timber clients. This one was a very, very different one than the previous one um, in a building in Rotterdam that looks still sort of very normal, a nice uh, uh, CLT uh, structure as one, or I also my personally would like it. But then the, um, the clients were a very different bunch of people with very different uh, preferences and they actually loved all kinds of different timbers and they loved to mix them, they loved to mix oak and cedar and softwoods and we found it very, very difficult and we, that's why we uh, invented painted timber and that enriched the repertoire to, to take these, um, make much more difference between the different um, uh, uses and balance them into this one project. And then the uh, interior can be ra even relatively conventional by still enjoying the spatial property of the material. The next lesson was not Leverens anymore, but another Scandinavian, and that was Sverre Wein. Sverre Wein is a Norwegian architect who excels in concrete, but he has have, has a different past, and that is, I thought that was utterly fascinating. If you ask me, this is maybe the most beautiful um, modernist building ever built, but this was the predecessor in, uh, in Brussels, um, the pavilion for the um, World Exhibition, and this brought us to the, uh, into the world of the Lignatur, and that these were the orthogonal structures, very, very different than the CLTs, orthodox uh, uh, structures that were uh, that where we could combine the acoustic properties of a building that spans longer and um, so we could build our first schools in timber using these acoustic properties the spatial properties and all these um, these uh, different uh, stacked uh, qualities that we after otherwise we don't stand the chance we built also um, 
uh, a sports hall in Lignatur, and it's not uh, like it's meant to be because we even used it for the walls and supported it by invisible steel structures and because the children were not meant to um, put their fingers in the holes we did a different um, timber profiling and at the end and that was sort of invented within a five minutes phone call with Ralf Schlepfer which was fascinating and it made me even more a fan of uh, the Lignity into a company where would we be without them they are my, our best really best friends in our uh, profession and then, um, but sometimes we, uh, um, we leave uh, the Lignatur and we, uh, we choose it for the, we change it for the uh, Lignotrend. These are the competitors. And sometimes that's uh, um, an interesting um, experiment where we use what? The Van Eesteren Pavilion, there we really also celebrate um, the, the beams, the beam structure, the flat, uh, the simple uh, stacked systems that fits into this modernist world of the Netherlands wonderfully. I, I could talk for an hour about this one, but it is um, a simple homage also to um, the Sverrefein with a rhythm, with a good lighting, a good acoustics, and here the flat systems are Lignotrend and not um, Lignatur any longer. It's a, uh, it's a space that actually speaks for itself. I, um, I switch now to the real lessons we've, uh, we've learned where we all can combine these. These projects are actually single issue projects. They are meant to serve a purpose, but actually they're meant to, um, to combine the lessons of, uh, uh, they, are, they are meant to, um, uh, to bring the, the idea of timber structure uh, further, but where it really, really matters, and that is our, the biggest challenge, much, much more important, I find, than new buildings, is how we transform buildings and how we work with the existing. And, um, and, and then we uh, had the chance to work with quite complicated restoration, transformation projects. And it was a good experience that we actually meant were able to learn our lessons, to bring them into practice in these kind of complicated uh, situations. Um, a monumental school building in Antwerp, where everything that is blue is an addition, and everything that is blue is also a timber addition. And we worked here with Lignatur. It was this is where it all started in 1927 and it was a very um, in a very bad shape this school still monumental because it was designed by a famous city architect Emil van Averbeke and we added new pavilions in these courts to make them more inhabitable using CLT for um, the outdoor um, ceilings and Lignatur for the indoor ceilings because of acoustic properties, that we um, made a hybrid construction with, uh, with a lot, lot of steel, also some concrete, had also to do with the monumental status of this project. These, um, these um, pavilions look like that, hybrid with a, a, a concrete um, um, beam structure. It was a DBFM contract with Strabach, with a very, very large contractor where it things we could not control it uh, in, in a way we maybe sometimes would have liked. So we so, uh, said we may keep it very, very simple, but Lignatur will do the trick and being a very refined surface by, while being very simply simple to, uh, to use and to construct. We can always guarantee a sort of minimum quality. Um, then we also found that um, using the, um, the timber, it always, always matches in, in, uh, in the contrast to the um, monumental um, uh, rooms next to it. And there is a lot of timber also here. This is purely renovation, restoration, where all the timber elements were carefully restored or even reconstructed. This was the original classroom, and the new classroom had timber, new timber windows. So timber is 
extremely versatile, versatile, I agree with Hermann Blume. And then there was this wonderful attic, and uh, we, um, we could renovate it, but only due to the fact that we were experienced with timber. We, can, we were able to, um, to match the historic timber, reveal the historic timber, celebrate the historic timber because we knew that all the installations had to go somewhere else and the uh, and the fire protection also had to be solved in a different manner um, we added many uh, dormer windows and but also we discovered these historic uh, um, roof lights that nobody has, has seen when we started the project and now, um, and this is um, how it looks from the outside in this very urban context. No timber on the facade, but purely in the interior. The shed you see with the steel structure also belongs to the project. It was a famous harbor shed, also monumental. It was once built with steel and timber, but then renovated and it, it became a very poor looking steel hall and we said we have to give it a new identity and we have to use our timber a fable for that and that might be possible with Lignatur. Um, this is the inner court. We have uh, um, repurposed three of those halls, one as a mensa, one as a sports hall and the other one as a very print shop, all belonging to a very, very large school. And then, then this is the result of the uh, repurposing of that harbour shed with, um, with ling Lignatur, because then we can uh, also celebrate the acoustic properties of the material, the lightweight, and also the beautiful way that Lignatur works and receives um, a daylight. This is the part that is built within the DBFM contract, where the um, Strabach the contractor had uh, a say in it, so we have no, um, we have MDF acoustic paneling, and uh, but they could not find um, an alternative to Lignatur, luckily. And this is uh, the the hall next door where we had a different contract and where we could say, okay, we still want to have the uh, or even the acoustic paneling in um, um, in in ash, and that is then lignotrend as an acoustic cladding uh, and lining material. And this is then um, the whole project, the new built um, structure next to it. It's, it's half renovation, half new. It um, learns all its lessons from the uh, renovated parts, also the, even the, um, the roof uh, shapes. And again, we bring back the Ligna tour, on, but only on the roof. Here in the, on the ground floor, we only use the timber where we, um, as an interior material, further it was impossible. But here in this, um, in the hall, they learn how to work with timber. All the acoustic are timber as well, but then um, painted white. But, and then, but then we come to the uh, to the attic where there are the art uh, art studios and all kinds of creative classes, and there the lignatur actually is the material that makes a link between all the parts of that very complex building buildings. And um, and I hope that that is recognizable here a workshop for um, goldsmith and diamonds, um, and here the views through the um, harbors of Antwerp. I think I run out of time and I just skipped the last project, even though it's a shame. Um, but um, I, this, this I say for another occasion, I think. <sighs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mechthild. I think it was the perfect project to uh conclude with anyway. Really great. Thank you very much. We're now going to have the question time. Perhaps all of the speakers could maybe stay and then perhaps uh, Herman as well. I'll roam around taking your questions, bringing you the microphone. So, um, yeah. So, 
I guess just a, a super quick summary. We've started with very bespoke engineered timber from Harriman, very particular and incredibly creative use of um, engineered timber products at a sort of uh, high level, bespoke scale of project. And then we had, you know, what to do with CLT in, a, in an industry of enormous um, potential for timber housing. I think, you know, that's the future, not what we're looking at. And then we've had um, advocacy of particular components and used in a creative way. So, uh, say, standard, high-quality, prefabricated components used in a non-standard way. So I think all of that is a very good overview of what's happening in uh, engineered timber. Um, I'll start, if I may, um, because I th you first showed the Las Palmas project. That was what turned me on to CLT. <laughs> and I just graduated and then became the f I became the first person to use CLT in the UK, having seen that project. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wondered whether um, you've, you've clearly left it behind a little bit, CLT, and is that because you see it as um, not as good as hollow systems or framing systems or more efficient? In more mm. Sorry, that you see CLT as less efficient? Is that... No, I I'm a big fan still, and I, I, I very much love it, but it has become a lot, very, very expensive. And we have uh, done the um, Parasite Las Palmas as an experiment, and I always saw this experimental stage and phase in our life to, that should lead to the real wor world, and that uh, we saw much more in in the schools and the social projects rather than the... Um, for doing bespoke housing for some privileged people who can afford it. But we have actually built uh, continuously. We have even uh, delivered this year's CLT house. But it is not the, I, I, I because I was um, the, this advocacy for um, working with timber, that stopped at some point. I gave up on, on that because there are many, many people uh, talking about it now. And then uh, we can, do the things that we found find more. Yeah. There were can we have have an added value to it. Anyway, let's open it up to the room. Who's got the first uh, question from the floor? You, sir. Thank you all for all the amazing speakers. Um, I actually uh, want to start with a question for Herman, yeah. but he's in deep conversation. <laughs> so I'll start with a question for, uh, for Dennis. Um, you're doing a research about uh, timber detailing, very nice. Um, in what kind of way will your book be different from the manual of multi-story timber, uh, which is already out by, uh, I don't know what the name was. I think with, with, with this booklet we will go much more into depth. And what you see that most of the manuals and studies that have been done now are quite general and they don't go into typical solutions. So what we really aim is to see how, we, for instance, how do you build up a floor, how do you build up a wall, uh, more, well, we have called them uh, the SBR details, uh, which is quite common in the Netherlands. I don't know if it will be literally that, but we will work towards yeah, actually uh, approved uh, uh, details, which, uh, which is also a consensus with, with the expert team we have. We, have uh, we see a lot of discussion between experts, and we really hope that we can come to a consensus with the experts involved to really give, uh, yeah, to really give everybody the, the the feeling that we that we can make good details details with that. Perhaps can I add because I really love the book you mentioned, but um, I think I also it's, in, it's needed to have this uh, Dutch reference details because you know, we're only focusing on the Dutch project, so it can really add something to that book. So afterwards, it would be nice to really make a, a common uh, database with all the European, uh, but that's for later. <laughs> yeah. Sounds really amazing. Yeah. What will the book be called? <laughs> yeah, I, I, th I think the working title is the name of the project, but we don't know yet. So okay. we'll, uh, it's a rather long maybe we project. can make a competition for that or to, uh, to ask for good names. Uh. Please send me an email when you're finished. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the next. You, sir. 
Um, I also have a question about the, the book you're working on. Uh, I noticed you created 15 different projects, uh, and you mentioned that it's, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that uh, CLT is mostly plastered away. But you, you compared high-rise buildings with uh, very high uh, fire safety and woningsreinen uh, and and floors with, um, with uh, residential world buildings, which doesn't have those properties. Um, so I'm actually looking for if you if you make those comparisons and you make in details, does it is required to categorize those different subjects as well? Because you have uh, details on Holzbau for high-rise buildings in CLT with all the um, how you call it the, the properties for the different fire safeties. Yeah, I think what you see at the moment that fire safety is a bit of a different discussion in the Netherlands. There is a lot of discussion going on now um, because uh, mainly what happens now because uh, the Baubesluit doesn't isn't clear about how to work with fire safety and wood. Uh, so mainly there you see that every fire department is about negotiating what to, how you can make a, 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 safe, a safe building. So I think everybody really needs to have clear rules on that. Um, so I think apart from our investigation, there is now uh, um, a committee working on a new fire uh, regulation uh, uh, for uh, an NEN, uh, uh, um, uh, which really gives more clarity how to work with, with CLT uh, and wood projects in that. I think it's always mainly uh, fire safety, you have two things. You have the, the, the safety of the main structure, the compartment of the buildings, and you have the, uh, the burnability of the material you use. And uh, the main issue is about that burnability. And if you want to use exposed CLT, of course you can see uh, if it stands a uh, fire of 19 on 20 minutes with, with, with the fire range, uh, what burns away. But the big discussion at the moment is the burnability of the material. And uh, uh, that will determine in the end uh, how much CLT or how much wood we can keep inside in, in buildings. And I really don't know yet which direction that's going. But, uh, but we think that it will become more, uh, that you will become more to solutions, at least in apartment buildings, where you will have less wood in sight uh, because of the regulations. Yeah, we already see in the projects we analyzed mm -hmm. that there is a difference in, in between the projects. Some projects, they take into account this uh, fire resilience mm -hmm. and other just uh, apply to the, to the Baubesluit. So um, that's something that develops now, but we'll certainly write a chapter about it. <laughs> yeah. I have a you microphone. Have a mic. yeah. okay, Thanks uh, to all the speakers for sharing their knowledge. I would love to peek into Herman's brain since uh, you started using computers very early on. Do you have any experience also with like robotized production or robotized assembly? Or the wooden uh, parts buildings? Uh, just uh, like robotics, because uh, carpenters are very difficult to combine nowadays, and um, computer technology, like how c computers can see and also produce with robotics, I think, uh, yeah, like did Herman. What, what's, what's your concrete uh, question? What is his idea about uh, robotics and uh, the future of uh, production? Hört man mich, ja, ist okay. Also mit Holz, damals in den 60er, 70er Jahren, ich kam ja damals aus der Hochschule, hatte man eigentlich das nicht zusammendenken können, Computer und Holz, weil Holz eigentlich als natürliches Material nicht diese Disziplin hat oder diese, sagen wir, Eigenschaft, um geeignet zu sein für die Robotik ebenso wie auch für den Computer. Und wir hatten am Anfang natürlich Mühe mit unserem Schnittholz, das krumm war und zerrissen. Deswegen habe ich damals als erstes mal äh, gerade bei den Tragwerken mit G Ernst Geri zusammen an der ETH äh, den Entschluss fassen müssen, dass wir nur noch mit Brettschichtholz arbeiten, weil das ist präziser. 
Yes. Okay, I think um, in, in the 70s he started combining both uh, robotics and, uh, and, and, uh, and, the, and woodworking, which was uh, two completely separate uh, worlds. And um, the way of combining these was only by um, uh, having, having a standard and controllable um, uh, type of material. So uh, solid wood was, would not facilitate that because it, uh, it is uh, less uniform and uh, um, difficult to, to work with in a, in a robotic environment. Uh, then, uh uh, when Chico Ban was coming, he worked with Rhino, and that was an absolutely new world because then architect also uh, Sarah Habib or uh, mm -hmm. Forster or, uh, started with three forms. Uh, Fraiotto was the first, and then was the question: Can you do it better with steel, concrete, or wood? But we had at this time our CNC machines. This was a, a special machine in 1990 was built uh, with five axes and we could form carved uh, this uh, beams. And that helped to, free, uh, to, found, to find a new way to go further with timber. And now I think we are in a situation that timber is the first choice when we have complete complex forms. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, the, the good uh, choice is to have acoustic material. Yeah. <laughs> that we can do. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, everyone, for the fantastic presentations. I have a question for Herman. Uh, when uh, explaining the swatch building, I, I remember he mentioned that this is something which you can do only with wood and not with steel and concrete. It, it would be great if you can explain a bit more about it, talk a bit more about it. Ja, ich könnte noch. Das war eine ziemlich spezielle Situation. Nikolaus Hayek hat ja damals Watch übernommen und das ist ein sehr dominanter Mensch. Und wir waren in der Präsentation dieser vier Architekturbüros und Nikolaus Hayek hat mich dann gefragt, seine Schwester war auch anwesend, ob wir das überhaupt mit Holz bauen könnten. Oder er traute uns natürlich überhaupt nicht. Chigoro bauen schon etwas, aber mir natürlich nicht. Und ich habe dann gefragt, wenn ihr Uhren bauen könnt, dann können wir das auch mit Holz bauen, oder? Und ich glaube, ich habe schon das Vertrauen gewonnen und da hilft natürlich Shigeru Ruban mit seiner starken Überzeugungskraft, dass man den, den Weg mit Holz geht. Und sein Projekt war natürlich schon in diese Richtung gezeichnet. Ich glaube, mit Stahl würde man nicht einen gleichen Entwurf machen oder mit Beton. Der Entwurf ist dann natürlich schon etwas holzbezogen. Und äh, dann kam natürlich die ganz schwierige Situation, wer kann das ausführen? Und da gibt es einfach in Europa praktisch fast keine Firmen, die das können, oder? Also damals. Jetzt gibt es mehrere. Aber das kommt jetzt langsam. Und das war äh, sehr, sehr schwierig auch, weil das sind verschiedene äh, Eindeckungen mit transparenten äh, Öffnungen, mit opakten Öffnungen, dann Solarpanels und äh, das war äh, gemischt über das ganze Gebäude bei diesem Wurm. Und da hatten wir dann einen guten Vorschlag, aber dummerweise, und das muss man schon sagen, ist dann eine Firma aus Deutschland, hat sich da reingedrückt mit besseren Preisen 
Und das Dach ist halt einfach heute noch nicht dicht, oder? Ich möchte nicht sagen, dass Deutschland immer schlechter ist, aber ich <lacht> <lacht> hätte mir Holländer haben müssen. <lacht> aber die Erfahrung hat einfach gefehlt. Und ich habe natürlich durch meine Firma früher so viele Fehler gemacht, auch mit Dacheindeckungen, dass ich einfach wusste, wie man das, äh, sagen wir, lösen muss. Äh, aber eben Schicksal... Äh, der Holzbau da hat funktioniert, die Eindeckung leider nicht. Okay, no, quickly. I'll uh, try to, uh, try, try to uh, translate this. It started out, out with a very stubborn uh, uh, lead man taking the project. Um, uh, luckily, uh, he had Shigirubban as a partner who is uh, extremely uh, persuasive and uh, strong in, uh, in, in, in his views. And um, uh, to, together they, uh, they, they went for, for the wood approach in which he says it, it would not have been the same or possible or, or similar in, in, a, in a steel structure. Um, in, in this came also um, the complication of a, a different kind of cladding and layering. So it was not only glass, but, but also solar panels and uh, uh, different membranes. Um, And uh, this, in the end, um, a German contractor, that's what the joke was, ab was about, uh, a German contractor squeezed himself into the, into the project and uh, they, they have uh, less experience uh, than the Swiss and uh, have made less mistakes. So um, um, they, they, they made their first mistakes on this project. Thank you, Sean. I think that's a really good moment to, uh, to conclude because it's uh, already time for the break. So I want to thank you all individually for uh, your contributions to a really interesting morning. Thank you so much.